Hello. How, how is everybody doing? My name is Michael Arroy. It's my privilege to serve Calvin University as its president. And we are so happy to have so many participants joining us tonight. This is great. Um, this would have been hard to organize uh, in person. And, um, and I guess one of the silver linings of this, of this period of time is that um, we can connect more easily, at least in this way. So on behalf of the Calvin University community, the faculty, staff, and the students who are here on campus, um, we welcome you and we welcome you to this time. I think you're in store for a great evening. We've got a lot of our wonderful team members here um, who are eager to answer your questions and engage with you. I'll be um, kind of sitting in and, and listening to a lot of the conversation and helping out where I can be helpful. But in general, we have such an excellent team. I don't need to do much. It's a, it's a really well-run well run operation. Um, I wanna let you know that, that we're very aware uh, that, that parents are in a, in a really different place depending on their circumstances about how they're feeling about um, their students uh, attending college next year. Um, we know that some of you, perhaps if you've had a student in a gap year and they've been in your basement all year long, you can't wait for them to go. And for others, you've not said goodbye to a student at college before, and it's, it's an unbearable thought. And uh, there's a lot of people, all, all, all kinds of places in between. But one of the things we want you, you to know that we begin uh, praying for you um, long before your student even applies. And, um, and so we wanna to begin tonight's meeting um, with a word of prayer. I am um, gonna invite you to join me as I pray for your student, but especially for you. Um, you have a special place in our hearts and that's why we have um, this event here tonight. So join me in prayer. Our gracious and loving God, we thank you that you have dominion over us we thank you for your creation. Um, we thank you for the glory of your creation revealed in the sons and daughters of these parents gathered here. Um, we know um, that each one of these people is a, a precious uh, treasure to you. And we also know um, that, uh, that, that parents are making thoughtful decisions along with their students, um, trying to support them well in this decision, this next stage of their lives. And so we offer their circumstances, their situations up to you. Um, we, we pray that they would feel that the, and experience the love of Christ as they engage with uh, members of our Calvin community. Um, we also hope and pray um, that they would feel comforted knowing that you, God, are sovereign and that you carry um, us, each one of us in your, in our, in, um, your hands. Um, and then finally, we pray for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Um, to, this is a time of an unseason of un, a season of unprecedented anxiety and worry. And we pray that the Holy Spirit would enter in and um, intercede with sighs too deep for words, as the scriptures say, to comfort the hearts um, and, and the minds and the souls of, of all the people represented here um, by these families and participants tonight. So we pray this in the, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I'm going to introduce to you um, David. He's here. Yeah, yeah. You, you got on a little, little more easily than I did, a little more elegant than I did, but you've been at this a while. David is a great member of our admissions team, and he's going to be our moderator uh, for tonight's conversation and um, ease the transition from, from topic to topic. So with that, I'll turn things over to David and, um, and I'll, I'll uh, maybe see you a little bit later tonight. All right, thank you, President O'Reilly, for that warm introduction. Um, yeah, my name is David Weinbeek. I'm an admissions counselor here at Calvin. So I'm happy to help any students who have questions or are looking to get connected at Calvin as they consider coming here. Um, I wanna introduce Paul Witte, our Director of Financial Aid, and Melissa Rousseau, our Director of Admissions. Uh, they are gonna be leading you on a presentation here uh, to give you some financial aid information. Um, as this presentation is going on, feel free to type in the chat box any questions that you might have. We're gonna be doing a live Q&A session during the presentation, and then we're also gonna reserve time for a, a Q&A session afterwards. Um, so feel free to type them during the presentation or um, during that session in about 20 minutes. Um, other than that, feel free to take it away.
Hey, Paul, I think you're muted. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, that's okay. My, my start was a little rough anyway, so <laughs> I must have double clicked on there. So you get a chance to do it again. Yeah, I will uh, welcome all of you again uh, from my home to yours. And it is a, a privilege and an honor uh, to be in front of you uh, virtually. Um, tonight and uh, I'm really looking forward to our uh, really a lot of talking on my part, but I know there'll be a lot of questions as well. Um, and this this presentation is very timely. Uh, we're going to focus on award letters and and how to adequately compare award letters. Uh, you may have received some of those uh, already from uh, competing or other interested colleges in your in your student. Um, Calvin plans on starting to mail award letters out this Friday. And so you will be receiving or your student will be receiving uh, in the mail uh, in the next couple of weeks an award letter from Calvin. Uh, it's a, an exciting time for us in financial aid. Uh, it's a lot of work uh, leading up to this week. And so we look forward to the conversations that that, that, that will spark. And we look forward to helping you and your student make a, a college decision. We wanna make sure that you know how to compare apples to apples and that you are comparing apples to apples when it comes to award letters and not comparing apples and oranges or tomatoes and potatoes. Uh, that's why we're offering this session because it can be difficult at times uh, when you've got multiple award letters and you're trying to figure out what is the net cost uh, to my student and to me. And net financial costs may not go beyond the award letter, but value does go well beyond the award letter. Um, and the net cost. And in most instances, you'll get what you pay for. So let's start with the components of an award letter. And I should mention that there will be a reference sheet available for attendees um, shortly after the conclusion of our presentation, it will be emailed out. And so don't feel you need to feverishly take notes. A lot of what I'm talking about tonight will be in that uh, reference tool. So let's start by understanding the basic components of an award letter. Costs, which uh, you're probably familiar with direct costs, but there's two types of costs, direct and indirect. The direct costs um, include tuition and required fees and room and board. Tuition is most often at a full-time course load and fees may or may not be itemized um, on your award letter, but they may be included in tuition. Um, Calvin includes a $250 wellness fee in the tuition and required fees line, and the, the rest of the cost is full-time tuition. Room and board, usually combined, is inclusive of the dorm cost and a meal plan, and that meal plan is usually the college's full meal plan for the week. And room and board may be combined or broken out separately. Um, if you are, if your student is living with you at home, uh, obviously room and board will not be included in your award letter. And that can also change. Um, uh, and that decision can be made later. Um, but you will find room and board cost uh, usually in the direct costs at the top of an award letter. Indirect costs are less known. Um, but once I mention them, you'll remember. Um, and, and also need to take these into account. They may be stated on an award letter, they may be in the notes to an award letter, or they may be on the web, um, on the uh, college's website. Calvin puts these costs in the notes to the award letter because they can differ, differ by student, so we just provide estimates. And these are more controllable costs um, by a student or you. Uh, the first of those being books and supplies. So we estimate that on the basic uh, cost of books and supplies for a student at Calvin. That may be um, in many cases less um, if your student looks for books online or rents books. There's a lot of different options, but we do encourage them to use our bookstore as well where they'll find everything they need. And we do try to keep those costs down as well because we know uh, these can be substantial costs over the course of four or five years. The other indirect cost is personal expenses. Again, that's an estimate, and that's based on all students' living expenses beyond room and board. For instance, um, going out to eat, 
or providing entertainment for oneself. Um, there's a lot to do on Calvin's campus. We keep them involved and there might be small fees and that type of thing. Um, but we want to account for that cost when we're uh, sharing the award letter that those costs could be incurred as well. And then the final indirect cost is transportation. That is an estimate based on all students and location. So that's gonna be a large range. So we've got taken care of the cost and that is normally known as the sticker price, but that's not the comparison point. Uh, we, need, we need to look at financial aid portion of the award letter. And there's some common areas of financial aid. There's some that aren't so common. And there's a few pitfalls that we'll review. Um, so let's make sure that you know the different kind of aid on an award letter. And I'm gonna take a little sip right here. Many, you are, many of you are familiar with the primary form of aid and that's in the form of scholarships. Those are earned and free money from Calvin or they can be from outside organizations. Academic scholarships usually come with GPA renewal requirements. Um, Calvin's are guaranteed through the sophomore year if there's a cumulative GPA achieved of at least 2.0. We wanted to make aid stable for a student in the first couple of years, uh, but still keep a minimal GPA requirement. And so in that freshman and sophomore year, that academic scholarship is generally guaranteed. Uh, that's something you might not find at other colleges and universities, so please pay, pay close attention to the renewal requirements. Renewal for junior and senior years academic uh, scholarships require a cumulative 3.0 GPA, so it does increase as a student remains at Calvin. And we wanted to offer more stability in the first two years, but also the second and give students an uh, opportunity to improve their GPA if they're struggling. But compared to the other colleges terms, the other type of scholarships are named donor scholarships. And that is something we have not awarded yet at Calvin that comes in the next month and a half. And so you won't see those included on your award letter. So keep that in mind, that could be an aid adjustment um, coming down the road. And we will, um, I'll go over a little bit of our commitment on that uh, up front that you may see in your award letter um, at, the end of the, at the end of these types of awards. The deadline for named donor scholarship applications is February 1. And so that's just around the corner. So if your student hasn't um, looked busy in uh, applying, about 40% of students apply in the last week leading up to that February 1 deadline. And so um, ask your student if they've applied for those named scholarships. Um, we will be doing our review over the next month and those awards will be made in March. Awards are similar to scholarships, but they usually don't have renewal requirements. Um, examples of our awards uh, that automatically renew is our first generation award, our legacy award, and our mosaic award. And like I said, they do automatically renew each year. They don't have, students do not need to apply for those. They're automatically awarded. If there's awards on other letters, just make sure you're looking at the college's website to uh, determine what the renewal characteristics of those are. So and not just comparing amounts, but what do those amounts look like over the next four years? Uh, I know most of you are, are looking at the next four years and not just the first year. And so it's important to understand the renewal requirements of each of those awards. There's a third type of free money and that's grants. And grants are almost off, always based on the filing of your FAFSA. And that's a starting point for most colleges. Um, like President Leroy uh, included in his introduction, uh, we know that circumstances for families are certainly different than they were a year ago. And that includes financially. And so the FAFSA may not give us a good uh, starting point. It gives us a starting point, but it may not be a good ending point. And so we wanna hear from you as families, um, how your income may have changed or if you had a job loss or if medical expenses have um, exceeded the norm. We want, we want to get a good understanding of your financial condition. And so we, we do have two types of grants that 
uh, you may see on your award letter, and that is based on your FAFSA and any special circumstances you share with us. Uh, the Calvin grant can vary from year to year, and that is uh, based on the FAFSA, um, which is based on your income, your assets, your number of students in the household, um, and the number that you have in college. And obviously that can change over four years. So that Calvin grant can uh, vary. There is a no crest supplemental grant, which you may also see. Um, that is a fixed grant over, four, over the four years at Calvin. Um, and that's gonna depend on your need level, uh, whether you qualify for either one of those grants. If you don't receive a grant, don't see that on your award letter, you likely don't qualify due to your resources or the university has met its goal in providing what it stewardly can provide at a certain level of need through other means like the scholarship or awards uh, that your student has received. Again, I'd like to remind you of a special circumstance. Um, if you don't receive a grant and you think you should receive a grant, um, we're gonna point you to the special circumstances to understand your income and assets a little more deeply. Um, and that will, that resource will become available to you as well. Um, it's on our web and uh, we communicate after award letters, we communicate the, the reference tool for that. So we've talked about grants at the university level. There are also grants at the state and federal level. For all the Michigan residents out there, um, there is a Michigan grant. It's expected to be $2,800 this fall, but it is based on a approved budget by the state, which occurs this summer, hopefully. Um, that is also based on the FAFSA and your need level, but the FAFSA needs to be filed by March 1 if you're to qualify for that grant. So I'm giving the state a shout out here uh, for that March 1 deadline. There's no exceptions. Uh, so I encourage you, if you haven't filed the FAFSA, to do so before March 1. Most state grants can't be imported to another state. Um, there's a few that can be imported. Pennsylvania, Vermont, Rhode Island are, are some I know that can be imported uh, if you live in another state. Uh, the Michigan grant cannot be exported to other states. You need to be a resident in Michigan. There are two federal grants that you can also qualify for, and these are for families that are of the highest need. The federal Pell Grant is available for those that have a need level of less than $6,000 to pay for college, and that is determined by the federal government, so those formulas are rather static. And because of that, the Pell Grant that you receive um, from various colleges and universities should be the same on your award letter. If there's a difference, then it's likely that you shared additional information with one college, but not the other. And then if you do receive a Pell Grant, in most cases, you're also gonna receive a federal supplemental grant, which matches in part that Pell Grant, knowing that those families that are receiving the Pell Grant have higher need. And so that the federal supplemental grant is partially funded by Calvin um, and will accompany a Pell Grant. And I'd like to just take a, a minute or two uh, to discuss institutional commitment. This is a line item you'll see on the Calvin Award letter, but not necessarily on other college award letters. A university like Calvin can commit and guarantee additional funds up front if certain awards have not been made yet. And like I referred to earlier, our name scholarships uh, are awarded uh, in the months of February and March. And so we may commit an amount that may be recognized later in the form of a name scholarship. We want to meet a certain level of aid for your student based on your student's need. And if that has not been met through scholarships and other awards uh, through our grant, we're going to commit additional funds in order to meet that minimum. And that may come in the form of a name scholarship, an adjusted scholarship, a new circumstance, or corrections, sometimes we make a mistake and we're happy to make those corrections. Um, and so uh, that's what institutional commitment means on your award letter. It's awarded now so that you have the best understanding of your total financial aid package in order to make an earlier decision if you need to, or to start your financial and college transition planning earlier. 
now we get to the more not as fun part because we talked about free and gift aid that you don't have to pay back, but often uh, loans are needed in order to fill the gap between the cost and what your finances can afford. And so we could take our entire time here tonight in explaining the, avail the available loans and the details behind each program, but we'll stay focused on uh, just the primary uh, loans that are available to your student and what you're likely to see on your award letter. If you file the FAFSA, it doesn't matter what level of need you have, you will receive an available $5,500 in loan, your student will receive $5,500 of available loans from the federal government. Those loans may be two different types of loans, a subsidized loan, if you do have need, that is a loan that does not charge interest over the course of a student's college career. It will start charging interest and require payments after graduation. If your student doesn't have the required need level for a subsidized loan, an unsubsidized loan will be issued. But the total of those will always equal, in 99% of the cases, $5,500. Those loans, the total of that of those loan of the loan availability increases $1,000 each year for your sophomore year and junior year. And then your senior year is the same as the junior year at $7,500. So that, that loan availability will grow. As long as you file the FAFSA, again, that, the, those loans will be available. I'll talk about accepting those loans as one of the pitfalls, um, which you can fall into, um, uh, depending on the way the college or university treats loans. There are other loans that are available as well for parents and for and uh, for parents and students through private loans or banks. Um, I'll also cover those under pitfalls because um, in relation to an award letter, you don't always see what those available loans are. And sometimes colleges can package those loans to make them look like aid. So we've reviewed costs, we've reviewed financial aid, We've reviewed loans. It's not quite yet time to compare. Uh, many award letters or really all of them that you get should include some notes and next steps. And it, it's important to review those again so you know the renewal characteristics of your awards to know uh, what, if any conditions those awards have and what next steps um, to take in order to secure those awards. In Calvin, uh, for Calvin, you do not need to take a next step to accept those awards or scholarships. You do need to take a step to accept the loans, but you need, to, need not feel any pressure to do that immediately. Um, that can be done in late spring or over the summer. Um, it's recommended that you make that decision before the first bill comes out so that um, it is reflected on your student statement. So don't quite compare yet after the notes and next steps because there are some pitfalls that I'd like to review with you. Uh, first, I mentioned the student loan acceptance. Uh, most schools like Calvin will not accept a loan for your student, but there are some that will uh, provide a loan in the award letter. And unless the student declines that loan, that loan will proceed to be dispersed um, when your student enrolls. And so you just need to read carefully what the terms of the loan are. If there's next steps that include accepting the loan, then um, you're reading an award letter that doesn't require you to decline a loan. So just read those carefully. Uh, I mentioned parent loans. There's a parent plus loan, it's a federal loan. And that loan is available for the difference between the total costs, so the direct and indirect costs, books, supplies, tuition, personal and transportation costs, less all the aid that a student is eligible for is available for a parent in the form of a loan. And so that, if that's packaged in the award letter, it can result in a large discrepancy when comparing awards. And it's also a rather dangerous thing for an award letter to include. Um, it does suggest a loan that does have a large origination fee of 4% and an interest rate 
um, of 5%, which over the last few years, it's a pretty good rate. Um, student loans are at 2.75%, so it's not the most economical. But we do realize that parents do need um, to take advantage of those loans in order to make up the financial difference uh, between an award package and what their financial resources are. And so that is an available option. Federal work study is another area in which um, can get confused on an award letter. Federal work study are funds provided by the government to a college to support student employment. So certain jobs qualify for this funding and others don't on campus and off. If federal work study is included in your award letter, that just means that your student may qualify for certain jobs on and off campus. It doesn't mean they're gonna receive those funds. It doesn't mean that they have employment. It's just an estimate if they do have employment, it will be paid with federal work study funds versus a college's regular payroll. At Calvin, we do have plenty of student jobs. Um, and of course, in a new environment, that can always change a bit, but we, um, we haven't seen that federal work study funds have limited employment on our campus. So I encourage you when you're comparing award letters and federal work study is on one and not the other, really what you should be looking at is the job availability on campus if your student is planning to work on campus or or through an on-campus office um, in an off-campus job. Another item that uh, usually sounds scary for people uh, when they receive emails is verification. And that just means that your FAFSA has been selected, usually randomly by the federal government, and requires us to request and receive addi additional information. Some colleges may hold up your award letter if that's not completed. Calvin is not one of those, so it will not um, delay your award letter, but eventually you do need to complete it and we recommend sending us that information if your student has received emails from us and they do receive a number of them. And it's usually we're requesting W-2s or a tax return to confirm numbers on your FAFSA. That could result in a change in your financial aid in most cases, it doesn't. We're just verifying the, the amounts that you shared with us in the FAFSA. But just be aware that other colleges may require you to complete that in order to receive an award letter. Um, we're almost to the end of the pitfalls. Um, portions of aid, and this, this is a more rare situation, but portions of aid may be limited by tuition or full cost in Calvin's uh, in Calvin's case, uh, total Calvin aid, so scholarships, awards, name scholarships, and grants provided by Calvin cannot exceed our tuition. All aid, so add to that federal and state aid, um, cannot exceed the full cost. So tuition, room and board, um, books, supplies, et cetera. Federal and state aid can go towards room and board if first tuition is covered by Calvin Financial Aid. And the last pitfall, it's more of a reaction that we get this time of year is, I didn't receive an award letter. I thought that guy on the parent presentation said I'd have an award by now. But don't panic. Um, it could be that your student was just admitted in the last uh, two to three weeks and we first award an academic scholarship and then an award package is soon to follow. So it may be if your student was just admitted mid-January, um, it may be um, the second week of February by the time an award letter makes its way through the mail, which is a little slower these days too, um, but that's how you will receive the, um, the award letter. Uh, so watch for it in the mail. It's a black envelope with a nice label on and a good letter inside. So watch your mail over the next few weeks. Also have your student watch their email closely because any revisions to that award letter will become will come in their email. Um, there are not reissued uh, snail mail letters um, just through email. And I make a plea for patience. Um, it's thousands of letters that uh, we put together and uh, put in envelopes and many schools. Um, so I'll include Calvin in this too, but many other schools have second semesters just starting um, and in various fashions this year with a lot of change. Uh, so it may be later than accustomed to. Uh, we are 
mailing on the same timeline that we did last year. And so we're happy to provide you a, a war letter before everyone else um, or close to it. Um, so now having reviewed direct costs, indirect costs, financial aid, scholarships, awards, grants, loans, pitfalls, now is the time to compare. Um, since you haven't yet, right? <laughs> um, it should be clear on an award letter what the net cost is. It should be a nice mathematical formula that you can easily follow. And if it's not something that you can easily follow, then I would question it. Um, there may be some pitfalls in there. And it, if it's confusing to you on what's what the net cost is, then be careful. And we're happy to help you through that, whether it's our award letter, which it shouldn't be, um, or another award letter in comparing and helping you do that comparison. That concludes my part at the moment. Yeah, thank you so much, Paul. So much good information about financial aid award letters. There is a lot of details involved that you and your team have to work through to try to get the best package for every student. And um, we appreciate all the good work that you and your team do. And I'm sure you guys are full of questions. I see the Q&A has been filling up and uh, we have teams on staff right now to help out with those. So keep dropping your questions in there as we go. Um, and then we'll also have some time here in just a minute to do some open Q&A as well with um, a handful of us uh, answering questions. I did want to acknowledge we had a handful of people needing to join us late. We had a little bit of a technical glitch thanks to a really overwhelming response that we had to our event tonight. Uh, I had a little bit of a glitch on uh, capacity that we weren't expecting. Uh, did want to reassure you that we'll be sharing out the recording uh, after the event, shortly after the event, it takes a, a little bit to process that, but we'll share that out and make sure that you have that information. Um, and certainly uh, we're, we're here tonight to continue to answer your questions. So we'll, we'll get you that introduction that you, you missed those first couple of minutes. I'm gonna take over at this point and, and just highlight a couple of key things. Uh, as Paul mentioned, now is the time to compare. So as you're getting those award letters in the mail between the different college choices that you and your student have narrowed down to, uh, it is time to really sit and review. So it's, it's time for those tough conversations to really think through the full picture of everything that is on the line. Uh, I wanna remind you that there's a lot of elements to this decision. If you had been part of our webinars earlier in the year, we talked a lot about different ways to narrow down your choices and uh, think through what the best choices will be for your student and for your family. You know, there's those, those obvious elements like size and location and program and activities, all the different things that are important to you and your student. But think about also those long-term values. What are the career outcomes going to be like? Uh, does the school prepare my student well with internships and research work? Uh, what's, their, what's their record like for graduates that have gone out into the market or onto grad school? Uh, the feel of the campus, have you been able to be there or experience it in a virtual way that really felt like you could feel comfortable there and you could see that your student is going to be cared for and find the network of friends and supporters that they need? Is the academic support there? Uh, maybe your student is concerned about that transition to college and might need some extra support. A school like Calvin's going to have those types of things offered and ready for students, uh, really linking them to that and one of our, our biggest areas that students select Calvin for, and you might be considering colleges based on, is that fit around faith. Is faith going to be part of your day to day uh, in the conversations in the classroom with uh, the networks of friends that you have? Uh, you're going to be um, supported in that with faculty and staff all around them. Is that an important connection too? So be thinking about those long term values, along with those kind of obvious things and the cost. It's a big piece of this but certainly not your whole picture. And so be keeping all of those in mind. As Paul mentioned, there are some additional sources of aid. So it's important to seek out additional aid. Um, one of the ones he talked about that has a deadline really soon, and if you didn't catch that yet, I'm gonna reiterate it a couple more times. February 1st, next Monday, is the deadline for named scholarships. So if you have not started that yet, oh, you can hang on and go back to that same slide. I'm not quite done yet, they're pushing me. Uh, Name scholarships due February 1st. Uh, another area that uh, we didn't talk about tonight, or at least I didn't hear, were community foundations. A lot of you are coming from communities that have a lot of college support. Uh, check out your local community foundation. Great source of outside scholarships, organizations you belong to. There are a lot of sources. If you need help, our financial aid office is definitely willing to 
point you in the right direction, maybe give you a link, uh, show you some resources that you can apply for. Many of them have early deadlines. We're talking March and April. Uh, finally there, ask for help along the way. Uh, we really are here to serve you. Uh, you are our most important role. So we're here to connect with you. We have one-on-one -on -one options, both in-person and virtual. Give us a call, drop an email, we're here to connect. We also have uh, an event that happens every Monday and Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock called Kelvin Connections, which is an extra way that you can connect with faculty or department leaders in order to learn more about a specific area of questions on, maybe meet with a current student from that field. Great source that you have that can be found at uh, the visit website, kelvin.edu slash visit. Um, every question is a good question. As uh, President Leroy talked about in the beginning, whether this is your very first time going through the college experience, you have lots of questions. Those of you that this is your third kid going to college, you have lots of questions. All questions are welcome. Uh, we definitely are here to serve you, so don't hesitate. Now we can move on to the next slide uh, with a couple of resources for you. Uh, uh, our emails there for financial aid and for admissions. Uh, they'll show up in a second. If you can skip to the next slide, there you go. Uh, finaid.calvin.edu and admissions at calvin.edu. And then the next one highlights the deadlines coming up that you wanna be really aware of. Uh, so if you need to screenshot this or take a picture of it, uh, we also have this referenced in several places in our communication with your student as well. Uh, don't miss your uh, FAFSA deadline, which actually should be March 1st uh, for FAFSA. Named scholarships by February 1st. Uh, award letters are about to be dropped in the mail. Paul's team is working very hard on getting those out very soon. So uh, watch for that to arrive uh, very quickly. And then all of this is leading to that May 1st deadline for deciding the top choice for your student, uh, making that deposit, make sure you declare your decision. But all along this way, when you need help, just reach out. Um, any one of us are, are willing to help you out. With that, uh, we are going to move into questions and answer time. Uh, David's going to be helping us uh, grab the right questions and throwing them out to uh, Paul and myself to answer. President Leroy, I believe, is still on here with us as well. So David, if you want to let us know where you want to head. Yeah, we have a long list. Um, so there are plenty of them that we've answered already in the chat. Um, a few of them I think might be worth just going over to make sure that everybody gets an answer. Um, I think a good place to start would be, can we resubmit a transcript for an increased scholarship amount? Yes, you can um, up to about March 1. Uh, we may show some flexibility in that this year just because of the condition of schools and, and grades. Um, your scholarship cannot go down. So we look at revised transcripts or, or test scores uh, for an opportunity to increase your scholarship. All right, thanks, Paul. Um, and then let's see here. We've got a lot. Um, Oh, this is a great one. How do, diff how do the different scholarships that Calvin offers stack together? Um, does, one, does receiving one scholarship exclude you from receiving another? Or maybe, Paul, could you explain how, how we do that? I know it's a little bit more complicated this year. Um, they do stack on, on top of each other and, until it comes to uh, name scholarships may or may not. So if you recall me uh, stating that we are aiming for at least a minimum amount of aid for your student based on their need. And we're trying to fill that with various aid components of scholarship and grant and name scholarships. Because name scholarships come later, um, we will, you will see an institutional commitment on, you, you may see institutional commitment if we haven't uh, met that minimum. Um, you aren't excluded from receiving any scholarship because you've received another one. Um, but it can interact with the amount of Calvin grant that you receive uh, when we're trying to get to a certain level of aid. Thanks. Um, another question that came in, and I think you answered this one already. Um, is the Calvin Promise Scholarship based solely on high school GPA, or is that just the minimum to be evaluated? Um, are there any other criteria that you would look at? Um, it is based solely on, uh, and I should say weighted high school GPA um, that we receive from the school that uh, there aren't uh, uh, additional criteria to meet. And that Calvin Promise is guaranteed for four years. 
That's the 3.8 GPA. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we've gotten a couple questions about the special circumstances form. Um, would you mind explaining what that is uh, and why it's important? Um, I'll start with the latter of why it's important. Uh, we recognize that families have different financial circumstances than they did uh, two years ago. And that's what the FAFSA starts with. It, it is asking for your tax return information from two years ago um, by the time you, your student enrolls in the fall. And so you may have had a job change, uh, loss of income, um, uh, medical costs may have increased. And so we wanna know about those um, to see if we can make adjustments to your aid uh, because your need is higher. Uh, it's not guaranteed that there'll be additional aid, um, but we wanna take that opportunity to address your need. Um, it is, um, we don't have a link shown here, but it, um, if you type special circumstances on our website and your student will also be receiving a number of communications that include that link. Um, the only um, reason not to fill it out if you, uh, if you do think you have special circumstances is we may have already provided you as much um, financial aid as we can. And so it doesn't always uh, result in additional aid. Um, would you mind just explaining a little bit more about the name scholarships? How do students search for them? How do they apply for them? Um, maybe talk a little bit about what it looks like within the scholarship portal. Um, just we've had a few questions roll in about that. Sure. Um, again, the deadline is February 1. So uh, get your students busy if they haven't been. Um, we do, it consists of a general application that students uh, complete. And it's usually a half hour or less that they can complete that requires a couple of small essays and some factual information. We pull in what we can uh, from the student's admissions file to make it easier yet. And that general application information is compared to uh, scholarships that are in the system. So you don't need to search through every scholarship and decide, ooh, I, do I um, match the criteria for that one? The, the system is gonna match you to many of them uh, that you won't even see. Uh, and it will give your student after they submit that general application an opportunity to apply for specific ones that may require an additional question or two um, because the donor may be looking for a particular uh, criteria or um, an answer to an additional question. And so those you may or may not match all the criteria, but students may get 20 to 30 of those to just quickly uh, review and determine if they meet the criteria and answer that additional question or two. All right, um, one question, do you have study abroad programs and do the scholarships still go to that semester of travel? Um, I can actually answer this one. Uh, yes, your, your uh, financial aid will be applied towards that semester, but only if you do a full semester of travel. Um, if you do the interim option, which is a little bit shorter, it's about three weeks to a month long, uh, the financial aid package does not apply towards the added costs associated with that trip. Um, so there is that distinction. Did I get that right, Paul? Yes. All right. Um, and then another question we've gotten a few times. Um, could you explain the Calvin Promise and how it works with other scholarships? Do they stack on top of the Calvin Promise? So when we award your student, we are um, looking at what aid has been um, awarded, scholarships and grants. And if it hasn't reached the Calvin Promise level of 21,000, you'll see a Calvin Promise on your award letter. Uh, aid received after that uh, will be in addition to that Calvin Promise. It is a promise, so we're providing it and we're not gonna break that promise. Um, so there could be some aid changes after that that, that um, add, to your, add to your award letter, um, like a named scholarship, or if you file the FAFSA late and there's um, some grant available, uh, there may be additional aid there. So it, it is a promise that um, we're not gonna pull away off of your award letter. Um, does the college offer student loans or do the families need to shop around for student loan offers through private institutions? Um, the Calvin does not offer um, student loans. Uh, so your first place to find those will be what's on your award letter or through the FAFSA filing. Uh, those are likely going to be the best rate. 
um, especially the subsidized loan, uh, best terms of, of no interest accruing. Uh, the second place to go would, it would be to look at the federal parent plus loan, uh, but there are many private lenders and we list those um, ones that have worked well with our students uh, over the years on our website to uh, contact. We can help you go through that as well, but they have a nice comparison tool of about seven that we that we recommend there that um, to compare terms and they compete with the federal parent loans and so I would definitely consider the parent plus but along with some private options. Paul can I add to that um, just to clarify most students tend to use the federal loan programs first the federal student loan programs that are subsidized and unsubsidized student loans if they're eligible. Um, yes. And then from there, most families will then choose either private or parent plus loans after that. Correct. Yeah. Um, student loans, of, of course, are the obligation of the student to pay back and parent loans, just like it says, our parent loans are our parents are required to pay those back. Um, but it will make, uh, we don't let a student accept a interest bearing loan before the subsidized federal loan. And we strongly encourage to accept the student loans before a parent loan is, is uh, entered into. Although we know there are circumstances where parents desire to have that debt versus their student, but you're gonna pay a higher rate and origination fee if you do that. Uh, what if students' schools only use an unweighted GPA rather than a weighted GPA? Uh, is there anything that we can do for them there? Um, we'll take a look at the transcript, but uh, um, it is, uh, there's a lot of different things that schools do. So to draw comparisons between them is difficult. Uh, some will wait within the course, some will have weighted courses, some will have different scales. And so it is from the official transcript what the GPA is. But if you find yourself just shy maybe of a scholarship or the Calvin Promise, we're willing to take a look at it to see what uh, see what courses have been taken, but it's going to have to be close to that 3.8 in order to squeeze into that uh, uh, into the Calvin Promise or into a higher scholarship. Again, we're trying to meet a minimum need as well, and so you may not receive a higher scholarship, but you may receive additional grant if we haven't met the the amount of aid that we desire for your student. Here's a fun one. Uh, if the parent is an alum, is there an alumni scholarship or grant available? Um, our legacy award is automatically awarded to um, children of alum. And so that's a $4,000 uh, award. It's called the legacy award. Um, I don't know right offhand if there are named scholarships that require your parents to be an alum, but I'm not immediately aware of any of those. Maybe this is um, this is also just a good occasion for me to chime in about um, the named scholarships. Uh, you will find more named scholarships at Calvin than than any other higher ed institution I've ever seen, and you might ask why that is. Um, that is really a reflection on um, our alums and our donors who so believe in the Calvin education that they have made their resources available in the form of endowments that, that the annual interest or in return from that funds these scholarships or from current gifts where they just give a certain amount um, every year. So you might ask, what does a president do? One of the things that I do is I spend a lot of time with those people encouraging them to, to uh, vote um, with their dollars uh, for students to come. And um, so, the, yeah, there are some alumni uh, scholarships and opportunities, but there are a lot of our alums who want people that are just getting acquainted with Calvin to come and join us too. And um, and so, it's it's a it's actually an inspiring thing when you think that that dollars of people who have been here are returning as strong endorsements of the education they receive, so strong that they want others to receive it. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing about Calvin. And, um, and so if you are a recipient of one of those awards, um, you, your student probably will have an opportunity to have some communication with the donor um, to be able to say thank you. 
Um, sometimes the donors are, are humble and anonymous and shy, and um, it may not be quite so direct, but it's, it's really a rewarding aspect of this donor program that the student often actually gets to have a connection to the family uh, uh, that has contributed to the scholarship. So anyway, that's, uh, that's for any alums or any, any of you that have contributed, um, that's just my way of saying thank you and, and recognizing that we do this because our alums um, really value the education they've received. So. Couple questions about um, finding local scholarships or community scholarships. Uh, do you have any recommendations for um, families to be able to find some local scholarships that they could apply for? I know on our website for financial aid, there's a great location on there for additional scholarship uh, searches that you can use. Um, and I saw there was one question in there about uh, some of the community foundations have rules that you can only use that money in state or um, you know, maybe in that uh, certain colleges, I've seen some of them limit to say, oh, you need to be going to this state college or this community college to get it. That is going to happen uh, when you're moving state to state, but be looking for ones that are a little bit wider. Some of those community foundations and especially larger organizations, um, you know, say you belong to, you know, some of you might have a military background or you might have a, um, an association with like a volunteer club, um, you know, 4-H or FFA or things like that whatever you've been involved with, seek out scholarships. Even the big ones like Burger King and Taco Bell, they give out great money and lots of students receive that. So um, even if it's only worth $500, it, it's worth it in the long run because those will start adding up. But the financial aid site's a great place to start. Um, if you search for uh, additional scholarships, Paul, will that help them get it? Yes, that's a good place to start. A, a even as good or maybe better place would be with your high school guidance counselor. They're aware of what local awards that students have received in the past. Um, and also those in your church or local businesses. Um, it's a lot of word of mouth and just talking with people to find out what may be available. And so those are church and school and local businesses. Um, people you know are sometimes the best um, uh, people to know what's out and available. One common myth that we hear too is that that's something you can only do as you're headed into your freshman year of college. That's not true. You can seek additional scholarships all the way through college. Um, I've had some really motivated sophomores and juniors that I've known before say, I'm, I'm tired of loans. I want to get some more scholarships and you can find more. So encourage your student to stay motivated on, on looking for more funding like that. Um, gotten a couple questions about depositing. Um, could you just explain what that means and how students do that? Uh, I can add in on a couple things as well because we, we do handle a little bit of that on the admissions side. Sorry, I lost my mute button. Um, depositing means that it's your, your commitment to attend Calvin. It's saying that this is my choice. This is where I intend to go. Um, and so we do ask for your deposit. Um, by May 1st, uh, that helps us solidify our freshman class and plan for resources for the incoming students. Um, so that is uh, kind of your solidifying statement to say this is my choice and this is where I'm headed. Um, and that, uh, um, that's a fee that uh, covers things like uh, orientation programs and things like that in the summer and, and heads towards the cost of starting in the fall. All right. Um, David, last, you're welcome to add to that if you had more that you think that should be added to that, so. Uh, last question here. Um, and we will follow up with any of these unanswered questions. We'll try to get to all of them. Um, so if we didn't cover them during this session, uh, we'll do our best to get back to you on that. Um, let's see, um, do we do a matching grant? Like if a church gives money uh, to a student for their college education, do we match anything like that? Do we have a program? There is not. Um, we have a number of churches that provide scholarships in the name scholarship uh, realm from donors and past alumni, um, but there are no matching church grants. All right, so that concludes most of the time that we have. Uh, like I said, we will stick around and answer some of these questions in the chat. Um, feel free to connect with anybody from financial aid or for your, with your admissions counselor as well. Um, we are kind of here to help you along every step of the way um, from application up until actually moving into the dorm. So we are, we are more than happy to do that for you. Um, feel free to connect with 
with myself or the other admissions counselors, I believe we'll put a contact um, page up in a minute here. Um, but yeah, we're definitely thankful for you guys uh, coming in, um, learning a little bit about financial aid. And like I said, we will maybe think of more questions down the road. Feel free to get in contact with us and we are more than happy to help. Yeah, absolutely, give us a call or an email. I know our visit team has been busy copying these as we go through and we will definitely get back with you with answers uh, to your questions or help you point to a resource or start a conversation if it's something that needs a little bit more in-depth answer. Um, really, really appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, this is an important step as you help your student prep for college. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Thank you. Have a great night, everybody.